unrestricted auto bomb. It would be rude not to. Sport mode. Let's see what this bad boy can do. 170, 190 k's an hour, 200 k's an hour. Let's wait for this corner to open up a little bit. All clear ahead. 220 k's an hour, 230, 240. And that, my friends, is as fast as I can go. 240 kilometers an hour is 150 miles an hour. Although this new RS3 Sportback can actually do 180 miles an hour, I'm on winter tires. So I'm rated to 150 miles an hour. But I'm on winter tires, so that means I can head up into the Alps, find some snow, and really put this car to the test. Hey guys, and welcome to Petroped, and welcome to the new Audi RS3. Welcome to the mountains of Austria and to the new Audi RS3 Sportback. Now, on paper, you might be forgiven for thinking that this new third generation Sportback RS3 isn't that different from the outgoing one, but I think you'd be quite wrong. There's plenty to talk about with this car. And I've got some of the best roads I've ever driven to put it to the test. Let's talk about the exterior styling and then we'll head off that way and have some fun in the mountains. First up, I've driven from Munich on wintry roads, so it's covered in road grime, but actually I think it just makes the car look even more purposeful, if that's possible. Now, the RS3 and me go back away because I very, very nearly bought one. Before I bought my JCW Clubman, I actually had a build slot for an RS3. And two reasons why I didn't go for it. Number one, the build slot at the time, it was just after all the emission scandals and it, was, it wasn't really that clear exactly when I'd get the car built and I needed the car. And then the second reason was I started to spec it and got the car to just shy of 50,000 pounds and that gave me a little bit of a wobble. We'll come to the price of this one shortly. So it's a car I've always admired. I've spent a lot of time in an S3 and always thought that that's all the car you would ever need. But this, this takes the S3 and turns it up to 11. Exterior styling, I think most of the changes for me are at the front of the car. I see quite a bit of e-tron GT in the front of the car. Some of the comments I've seen online aren't necessarily uh, in favor of this blacked out kind of grill work underneath the lights. But when you see it for real, actually, I think it looks really nice. And the coolest thing about this car are the DLRs, the daytime running lights. There's like a checkerboard pattern just to the bottom left-hand and right-hand corner of the lights. Uh, and I think in the when, you're, when you've got one of these behind you in the dark, it looks the business, it really, really does. But I do love the front end of the car. Let's just wander around the rear of the car where all the road ming is. Not a great deal of change around here, if I'm honest. Now, I've always really liked the rear end of the RS3 Sportback, and there is an argument to say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I can't see a huge amount of change at the back. You've got the trademark oval tailpipes. Now, there's also a saloon version of the new RS3. So the Sportback is at Gen 3, the saloon's actually at Gen 2. And I drove a saloon back from the airport to the hotel last night, 
and it was lovely. The spec of the car I had was beautiful, and I really like the look of the saloon. I think for my lifestyle, it would be the Sportback I would go for. I just think the, the practicality of that boot with the dogs, you can get a bike in the back. It's obviously full of all my filming kit and traveling kit, but there's, there's a good amount of space in here that makes this car really practical. And the thing I like about the RS3, if you compare it with something like an RS4 or an RS6, obvious statement coming. It's just a smaller footprint. It's easier to place on the road on a tight and twisty road. It's easier around town and parking and all those types of things. And yet it still packs a massive punch. As you saw in the opening titles of this video, we were on the Autobahn and quite easily hit 150 miles an hour without without trying at all. And this car will go on to 180 miles an hour, but because it's one degree and we're in Austria and Germany, by law, we have to be wearing winter tires, which actually, as we'll see very shortly for the type of driving and the roads, just make this car so usable out here. Let's jump inside and have a quick look at the interior. And then we need to get driving because I don't have a great deal of time. I've spent quite a bit of time in this car and it's a really nice place to be. I think the, the layout um, in terms of uh, the, the previous gen, I've not driven the previous gen RS3, but I've driven the previous gen S3 and it's just a really good format. Plenty of places to put stuff, cup holder there. There's a wireless charge mat for your phone, uh, Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. Uh, and you've got this virtual cockpit display with a whole range of different displays that you can choose. I guess the, the standout feature for me in terms of, of driving, and we need to talk about this when we get on the road, you've got the drive select modes that you would expect in a normal Audi, but there's a little RS button on here and you have an RS mode that you can individualize and customize however you want it. But that's when you tap into the real party piece of this car, the thing that happens between the rear wheels. So. I reckon we don't waste any more time and we get going and we drive down that way because this road's amazing. Four trim levels are currently available, starting with RS3 and prices starting from £50,900 for the Sportback and £51,900 on the road for the saloon. The RS3 Carbon Black adds, amongst other things, a different wheel design, RS Sports Exhaust and Matrix LED headlamps for £55,500 and £56,500. £1,500 more gets you a launch edition with a 155 miles per hour restrictor removed, upgraded stereo, pan roof and lots of other goodies. The range topping Vorsprung comes in at £58,650 and £59,650 for the Sportback and Saloon respectively. Okay, I spy a stunning, stunning Austrian mountain road ahead. I've got the normal drive select program in this car, but what I'm gonna do is push the little RS button on the steering wheel and I'm gonna put it into RS performance mode, because why wouldn't you? And I'm also gonna to go to the paddles, because this car has um, a very similar, on paper anyway, performance to the outgoing RS3, it's 400 PS. It's just 20 Newton meters more at 500 Newton meters. Oh, wow. Um, but what it's got on the back, there we go, is something called a torque splitter. So it's still got the permanent quattro all wheel drive. <laughs> this road's amazing. But what the torque splitter does is it just delivers the power of the torque through the rear axle in a way that is apparently meant to do two things. Firstly, reduce understeer, but also allow controlled oversteer. Now, I'm gonna be reasonably careful on this particular bit of road because well, it's quite cold, one and a half degrees. I am on winter tires. I don't particularly want to be stuffing it 
on an Audi press drive. But my first impression of the car, having driven it over to the mountains, is it's just got so much go. So on paper, very similar numbers. What's happened actually is the mapping, so the torque curve, the power curve's just been changed a little bit. Wowzers. To deliver the power in a slightly different way, it just makes the car feel more responsive, more punchy, more sporty. The front end is absolutely fantastic, by the way. And, oh dear me, there we go, a little bit of... Oh, what a car, what a road. There we go, a little bit of... <laughs> Just a little bit of slip at the back, it's so un -Audi like Now, I'm not going to be doing any massive Chris Harris-esque tail slides. There we go. But it's just enough to put a smile on your face. Oh, what a road, man. Gee whiz. So you can apply the power and just... Oh, this car is rapid. And this road's pretty special. I mean, come on. can really bury the throttle coming out of the corners get on the gas early and then just the, the back just comes out a little bit just rotates the car around a little bit and the thing is you won't probably won't see it on camera so much but you can feel it oh, you can feel it through my bum I can tell you say on videos about how much I like four-wheel drive and I know some people think that it's a bit dull and a bit boring and a bit diluted and safe what this torque split is doing is it's just it's still super planted and I feel very confident in the car even though there's a big drop to the left and it's cold and the conditions are not particularly grippy but it gives me confidence to really really get on it really get on it Magnificent road surrounded by snow capped mountains. And I think when you drive a car like this on roads like this, they really make sense. And there is an argument in the UK where we have a speed limit of 70 miles an hour. You know, why do you need a car de restricted to, you know, 170, 180 miles an hour? Well, in Germany, it makes sense because. You can do it every day if you live near an autobahn and you have to commute on an autobahn. And it does it so effortlessly. When you get on a road like this, especially in these winter conditions, you've got the four wheel drive just to give you a little bit more confidence. And you've got immense amounts of traction with the winter tires. It really is a compelling package. And it puts a massive, massive smile on your face. I, I absolutely love this car. What I don't love about it is the price tag. You know, it wasn't that long ago. I think when I was buying my S4, I remember I, I knew a, f a friend of mine got an RS3 and it was £60,000. And I'm like, wow, man, 60 grand, that's a lot of money. But that was an RS6. You know, these, the, the, you know, 58 to 60, chuck a set of carbon ceramic discs for an extra £5,000 and you're going to breach the £60,000 mark for a, an RS3. That's a lot of money. However, on the flip side, you're getting a lot of car for your money. It, in terms of performance, this is a real, true pocket rocket. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal car. It's so composed, so balanced. 
so drivable, so confidence inspiring. <laughs> so expensive. Let's put that one to one side. But yeah, it really is a very, very special, special car. I just want to talk a little bit about noise because this car, for a car in the days of OPF filters and all these emission regulations and stuff, it sounds amazing. I'm not quite sure what proportion of that is piped in sound using the speakers but it just has this raw guttural sound and clearly the straight or inline five engine that you get in these rs3s has such an iconic audi sound but the other thing and i'm trying to try and get it on camera it's got this amazing intake noise you can hear the the, the, the turbo's going sucking in the air into the engine and when you're on the on those kind of really twisty alpine -y type roads I was on before it just adds to the theatre and the drama and I think that's a really impressive thing now it doesn't have you know the pops and the bangs and the snorts of an RS3 of maybe five years ago but I'm not disappointed in the noise at all in fact sounds ace I wish I lived in Germany because you could just give it a bit of squirt like that on a bit of unrestricted autobahn and that's brilliant. So what are my final impressions of the new Audi RS3 as I head back to the airport and sadly back home? All in all this car is an epic package. I, I can't imagine there are many cars that could get from A to B on a bit of A or B road faster than this. It, it's a truly truly sensational thing. And if you drive the S3, the S3 is a fast car, 300 horsepower, four-wheel drive, and you think, this is just, this is a proper car. This has just got that extra edge, an extra 100 PS. It's got more torque, it's got more performance. With the five-cylinder engine, it's got a better engine tone, and that just gives an all-round package, an all-round car that just, well, just delivers. It's an expensive car, there's no denying it. However, you get a lot of bang for your buck. And there's much the same in this car as the outgoing model. There's the interior on the whole, I really like. The seats I really like, they're very comfortable. I'm not a big fan of the gear stick, but I said that in my S3 review, actually. But it's this torque splitter that's the big talking point. <laughs> no pun intended. That's the big difference the torque splitter at the rear and the slightly different map in terms of an extra 20 newton meters of torque uh, and just a slightly different power delivery make this car a sensational thing to drive on tight and twisties and i wasn't massively brave today but you just get this confidence inspiring drive you can get on the throttle so early in the corners the four-wheel drive kind of helps you out all the time, but that torque splitter just makes the car feel a little bit more playful. It certainly dials out some of the understeer that when you're really pushing on hard in an Audi, and you you know, you really do have to be going for it to, to get understeer in an Audi. It just dials that out and it makes it great fun. And on the roads that I've just been driving on in the mountains, it, it just demonstrates it perfectly. Lots of kind of tight hairpins and low grip conditions an amazing amazing thing so yeah um big tick big big thumbs up for me i didn't think that i wouldn't like it to be honest this for me would be a perfect daily for my lifestyle it's just that right size format perfect for the things i want to put in it and so on and and at the end of the day a really really quick car massive thanks to audi for inviting me out here to germany to to try out this new rs3 but back on some unrestricted autobahn so I think we may as well finish this video like we started it with a VMAX run well as fast as I can go on winter tyres anyway what a sound 150 170 190 200 yeah it's 220 and I'm, you know, you, you you come out here and I'm just cruising along at 200 kilometres an hour. It's opened up a bit now. I can see it a bit clearer. 
Let's take it up to the maximum I'm allowed to drive at on these tyres. There you go, 200, in fact that's 245 kilometres an hour. <laughs> what a sensational car! The gutting thing, I ran out of time to do a 0 to 60 test, 3.8 seconds to 60, and I have no doubt whatsoever it will be quicker than that. But it's not often I get to do a VMAX test on one of my reviews. But anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petra Pet for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film. But from the unrestricted autobahn in Germany, I'll see you on the next film, guys. You take care.